All is well, mga ka-CSS. Welcome back to our class. We already installed the Windows Server 2008 R2. To refresh you, let's have some recap. What type of installation did we use in installing the Windows Server 2008 R2? Mm -hmm. That's right. It's Custom Advanced Installation. Now, in creating password during our first logon, what are its complexity requirements? Precisely, password must be at least 7 characters containing 3 of 4 character types, uppercase, lowercase, numeric, and non-alphanumeric. Now, after successfully installing the Windows Server 2008 R2 and already logged on with the administrator account, the initial configuration task window will appear on the screen. Initial configuration task is also known as out-of-box experience or OOBE. It is a useful wizard for the initial configuration of a server which provide easy access on a single window. Here is the ICT icon. It is divided into three general categories. The first one is provide computer information. The second one is update the server. And the last one is customize this server. However, if you select the do not show this window at logon option, the window will not display on the next logon. But you can run OOBE in command line to open the initial configuration task. Using Windows key plus R and type OOBE then enter. In provide computer information, this section is where you can activate windows, set time zone, configure networking, and provide computer name and domain. In activate windows, we enter the product key and activate windows. So first step, click activate windows. The windows activation window will appear. Then type the product key. Mm -hmm. The product key can be found on the installation disk holder inside the windows package. Activation helps verify that the copy of Windows is genuine and it has not been used on more computers than the Microsoft software license terms allow and to prevent software counterfeiting. Now, okay, if the product key is incorrect, the Windows will not be activated. And if it is correct, just click Next. You have 30 days after installing Windows to activate it. Next is Set Time Zone. It is used to change the date, time, and time zone setting of the system clock. Default time zone is the Pacific Time. Okay, so just click Set Time Zone. Date and Time window will appear. If you want to set the date and time, click the Change Date and Time button. This is where you can change the year, month, and day. And in this part is for the time setting. If you are done, do click the OK button. That's it. Then to change the time zone, click the change time zone button. Choose time zone using the drop down tool then click the preferred time zone, then click OK. Then if you are done, do click OK again. Next task for this wizard is configure networking. This defines the network setting for this server. So to assign your server a static IP, click on configure networking. The network connection page will open. Okay. Double click or right click on the network card you want to configure. Right click then properties. Click on internet protocol version TCP IPv4. Okay, again. Right click then properties. Double click on TCP IPv4 then properties. 
to set a static IP address, mm -hmm. select the radio button. Use the following IP address and enter the IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server as required. Mm -hmm. Click the use the following IP address radio button. Sample is one nine two one six eight zero zero two. Then two five five. The default is subnet mask. The default gateway is so the same with the IP address. This for this next sample. 168.0.02 Then click okay, This place the static IP address Click OK Then OK your computer displays a static IP address. Now to set a dynamic IP address, select the obtain an IP address automatically option. Then select the then click OK. OK and close close. Once you set it, you will notice the changes are reflected inside initial configuration task. Last step in category 1 is provide computer name and domain. The computer is not joined to a domain by default. It is joined to a workgroup name, workgroup. So just click provide computer name and domain to rename your computer. Join this server to a workgroup or domain. In the system properties window, under computer name tab, you'll see the message to rename this computer or change its Domain or work group, click change, so click change. Then you can change the name and the membership of this computer. So enter the new name. You can enter the new name. For example, here is use F or no Junior. Mm -hmm. So by default, it is joined to a work group called work group. If you want to join other work group, navigate in the work group field. Type the name of the work group you want to join instead and top. Okay, for example, is SHS San Nicolas. But if you want to join it to a domain, enable the read button beside domain and then type the domain name, then click OK. It might take a few seconds and a pop up window welcomes you to the new work group. Click OK again. Now, the pop up window lets you know that you de your device requires a start in order for the changes to be applied. Okay, again, you are returned to the system properties window and a new window, restart, restart now, before you click restart now, save and open files and close all programs. If you're not ready to start, okay, just click restart later for you to save and close all running programs. For now, we will restart the computer. After the restart, your computer name will take effect and will join to the new work group. It is now able to communicate with other computers and devices that are part of the same work group. We're done with the first category of initial configuration task wizard. We will just discuss the last two categories on our next video. Thanks for watching.